We should be able to identify the key components of IPSLA configuration. And it has changed a lot inside of the iOS. Usually when it comes to fundamental connectivity, routing sort of stuff in, in the iOS, we don't see a lot of change and flux in, inside of the configuration. This is one of the areas where we've seen just a lot of changes. Um, I think Cisco's had a lot of committee meetings about this one. But let me walk you through what, uh, what you should expect. First, we set up what is called a probe. And the probe is kind of a set of parameters that define what we're going to be launching away from the router. We're going to identify the probe as 11, and we'll reference that later. We then say what it is what we're doing. And there's so many options available to us, but we want to keep this very simple. We set a destination IP address for ICMP Echo. So yeah, it's ping on steroids. It even tells us that inside of the iOS via the command that we use. We then set a schedule for this. And this is one of those things where if you use question mark help, you can get yourself into problems because you start to think, okay, well, I, I want to put in a time to start it and a time to end it. But for something like float, uh, for something like floating static routes that are tied to IPSLA, we just want them to be going on forever and start them right now, which means when the router comes back online, maybe it rebooted. It's going to restart these. Okay. Then we set up an object. So before, above, we have the probe and the schedule for the probe. Now we're going to have an object, and the object identifier is 1, probe ID 11, which points back to that right there. Okay. We're going to test reachability. Now these are things that you could explore inside of the iOS but you want to just do it this way. For wh what we are doing with IPSLA, we have a narrow focus, so keep it narrow. And then we can reference it. We've got an object. The object is referenced here. So this static route, this default static route will only be operational if the results of this object, which are linked to testing connectivity to this IP address, which might be an important IP address like a DNS server inside of the ISP, or uh, a device that we know we can reach through that ISP, this static route will only be up if the test is up. The moment that we start getting failures, and there's not like a hold time for this, the moment we get a failure, we remove this static route very powerful so that something else can take its place. I want to walk you through this really glorious example and you might want to screen cap it. Why? Because this you can take it to the bank if you work at the bank and apply it to the network. If you don't work at a bank, take it to your own network. So think, do I have this challenge of primary and backup but I'm not being intelligent about what I'm testing for Will the primary endure even if there's a problem downstream? Now, you might not worry about this, but if it resonates to you like, oh yeah, I remember having that problem and we basically had to remove the static route in order to switch it over, that's where this can come into play. So let's walk you through it. We've got the probe. We've got an ID, which is arbitrary, but referenced later on. We've got what we're testing for, so maybe it's an IP address on that router. We do this standard config, IPSLA monitor schedule 11, life forever, start time now. Just say that, life forever, start time now. Then we set up a reachability object. Object ID is one, and we are tracking for that now. So we have our primary route. And now, I see that we've got another default static route here. 
why is this functioning as the backup? How are we achieving backup connectivity via this static route? Well, it's the administrative distance. Did you see the five there? That's the key. This is a floating static route. It will not be present inside of the routing table until the administrative distance one route. This is going to have an administrative distance of one, not because of this number, but because we have not provided an administrative distance. So we get the default, the default being one for static routes. Okay. So if this goes down, which it will, if we can no longer ping that IP address from this router, we then fail over to the backup. This is a really great config that has loads of applicability and real-world networks.